Good afternoon. Welcome to this meeting of the Subcommittee on Landmarks, Public Siting, and Maritime Uses. I'm Councilmember Adrian Adams, the chair of this subcommittee. We are currently joined today by Councilmember Peter Koo. Today we will be voting on LU-218 and holding hearings on two landmark designations and a site selection by the Department of Transportation. We will begin with our first two public hearings on LU-238, the 238 President Street House, and LU-239, the Hans S. Christian Memorial Kindergarten, two historic landmark designations by the Landmark Preservation Commission. The buildings stand next to it stand next to each other in the Carroll Gardens neighborhood in Brooklyn, represented by Councilmember Lander. I now open the public hearing and call on LPC to present the designations. Lisa Kersavash, good morning. Before you begin, Council will swear you in. Okay. Please state your name. Lisa Kersavage. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the subcommittee in response to all council member questions? I do. Sorry for butchering your last oh, name. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> good morning. I'm just ways. using Lisa. <laughs> you may begin. Great, thank you. Um, and good afternoon, Chair Adams and subcommittee members. I am Lisa Krasavage, Director of Special Projects and Strategic Planning at the Landmarks Preservation Commission. Thank you for the opportunity to present LPC's September 18th designation of the Hansas Christian Memorial Kindergarten at 236 President Street and the 238 President Street House. These are architecturally significant touchstones in the development of Carroll Gardens and represent social improvements in education and immigrant welfare in Brooklyn and expanded opportunities for women in the late 19th century. These buildings were identified as potential landmarks in an LPC survey of, Carroll Gard of the Carroll Gardens neighborhood. At the public hearing on June 26, 2018, 21 people spoke in support of designating both buildings, including a representative of, US, the, of United States Congresswoman Nydia Velasquez, Councilmember Brad Lander, New York State Assemblymember Joanne Simon, representatives of the Carroll Gardens Neighborhood Association, St. Paul's Episcopal Church of Brooklyn, um, and Historic District, excuse me, and Historic Districts Council, in addition to 15 individuals, a representative of the Norwegian Immigrant Association and the American Scandinavian Society spoke in favor of designating the Hans S. Christian Memorial Kindergarten. One person, a representative of the owner of 236 President Street, spoke in opposition to the proposed designation of the kindergarten, and those objections will be addressed in this presentation. First, I'd like to summarize the shared history of the two buildings. In 1897, Elmira Christian bought the pre-Civil War residence at 238 President Street, shown covered in ivy in the photo on the right, um, renovated it as the De Brooklyn Deaconess Home of the Methodist Episcopal Church, and built the Hans S. Christian Memorial Kindergarten on the adjacent site. The Christians were longtime residents of President Street. Hans S. Christian was a Norwegian immigrant, and both the Deaconess Home and Kindergarten, established in his memory, served the Scandinavian immigrant enclave then living in this section of Brooklyn. These remarkable structures stand out in the streetscape of Carroll Gardens and represent significant cultural and architectural contributions to the area's history. The 238 President Street House is a pre-Civil War Anglo-Italianate house notable for its generous proportions, elaborate cast iron ornament, and the legacy of its residents' commitment to serving their community. It's located on the south side of President Street, shown here. The 238 President Street House was built circa 1853 by economist, merchant, and real estate speculator Edward Kellogg as one of a pair of semi-attached houses. Although its twin was demolished in 1897, its asymmetrical facade reflects its origin as one of a mirrored pair. The house's unusual width, Anglo-Italianate ornament, and setback distinguish it as an elite residence with few peers in Carroll Gardens at the time of construction. It still stands out among the brownstone row houses and later apartment buildings of the neighborhood. For its first four decades, the 238 President Street House was home to a succession of prosperous families. In 1897, Elmira Christian bought the property and renovated the building into Brooklyn's first permanent resident and training center for the Methodist deaconesses. The late 19th century deaconess movement educated women in religious and secular subjects to prepare them for urban field work and marked a step forward for women in the church. At the 238 President Street House, deaconesses lived communally and provided social services to their community. 
As part of Elmira Christian's renovation, the attic was expanded into a full fourth floor by the architect Woodruff Leeming with detailing that matched the existing um, floors below. In 1939, the building became the longtime home of two pillars of Brooklyn's Hispanic community, the Reverend Alberto B. Baez and his wife Thalia. A pioneering Hispanic Methodist minister, Baez began leading Spanish language services in Brooklyn in 1920 and in their former kindergarten next door from 1949 through the 1960s. Alberto and Thalia Baez are also notable as the parents of the physicist Albert, Albert Baez and grandparents of the musicians and social activists Mimi Farina and Joanne Baez, or excuse me, Joan Baez. Now private apartments, the 238 President Street House remains an impressive Anglo-Italianate style building and its, and its renovation to the Brooklyn Deaconess home of the Methodist Episcopal Church represents a rich history of service to the Carroll Gar Gardens community. Designed in 1897 by architects Hoff and Duhl, the Hans S. Christian Memorial Kindergarten is a notable Beaux-Arts structure that was the first purpose-built free kindergarten in Brooklyn. The building is located on the south side of President Street and Kale Gardens, which was a Norwegian immigrant enclave at the time of its construction. It was commissioned by, by Elmira E. Christian in memory of her late husband. Over a decade before its construction, she was instrumental in establishing the first free kindergarten department in Brooklyn, in a Brooklyn church basement, when the concept was somewhat new to Brooklyn. The term kindergarten was coined in 1840 by German philosopher and educator Frederick Froebel, whose child-centric methods centered around play. The first kindergartens were established in the United States in the 1830s to 50s and appeared in New York City by 1866. In the mid to late 19th century, kindergartens came to be seen as social and moral imperative to ensure that children learned basic skills, enabled immigrant children to learn English, and to instill in them the values of citizenship. Um, and this is a Jacob Reese photo um, in a tenement kindergarten. At the same time, the kindergarten movement gave female educators training in innovative teaching methods and unique opportunities outside of the home and represented the expanding sphere of women's influence in the 19th century. Earlier kindergartens in Brooklyn operated from adapted homes and houses, churches, and other institutions. In contrast, the Brooklyn Daily Eagle wrote that the purpose-built Hans S. Christian Memorial Kindergarten was the only building of the kind in Brooklyn so far as known and one of the very few in existence in any city. And continuing the quote, so far as known, the only one expressly and solely for the use of a kindergarten. Its elegant Beaux-Arts exterior, exterior and thoughtful design drew attention to the, its civic role and earned its numerous mentions as the model kindergarten. Built on the cusp of the Board of Education's adoption of kindergarten departments in its elementary schools, it is a rare example of a standalone kindergarten structure. The building served the community in other ways in the 20th century. By 1901, classes and church services were held in the building outside of class time from 1949 to 1960s, while a resident of the adjacent 238 President Street House, the Reverend Alberto Baez used the building for services of Brooklyn's oldest Spanish language Protestant church. It has been a private residence since 1974. Testimony presented to the commission by a representative of the property owner opposing designation questioned the significance and integrity of the building. LPC's research department addressed these concerns for the commission's vote, and I'd like to address them here as well. Um, the owners representative asserted that the kindergarten program housed in this building did not originate here and that the structure had uses other than kindergarten classes over the course of history. And these assertions are true, however, LPC does not believe that these factors diminish the building's significance as a purpose-built kindergarten. Um, as she sought an appropriate site to build a kindergarten building, Elmira Christian began an interim kindergarten program in the basement of her church, then in the first floor of 238 President Street in the months before construction. The structure was a custom design meant for use as a kindergarten. Later uses do not diminish the significance of the design. Because, and the second assertion is that because the interior was not under consideration for designation, the historic use was irrelevant and our use of the term purpose-built was unclear. And it's true, the interior was not designated. However, the elegant Beaux-Arts facade was a public expression of the kindergarten's innovative program. Its custom design made the Hans as Christian Memorial Kindergarten an idiosyncratic statement 
building that was exemplary of the kindergarten movement. Our use of the term purpose-built highlights the fact that this structure was designed to house kindergarten classes rather than being adopted to that purpose as has been done in other locations. And third and finally, that alterations have been made to the facade. Um, LPC found that the buff brick facade and coins, decorative window surrounds, elaborate portico, cornice, and roofline details, and other elements remain intact and are consistent with the Beaux-Arts design meant to communicate the structure's noble purpose. As such, its Beaux-Arts design, building form, and exuberant features remain legible, and the alterations, including the addition of a garage, are reversible. In addition to its architecture, the Hantas Christian Memorial Kindergarten is culturally significant, representing important developments in education, women's roles, and immigrant welfare in Brooklyn, which elevates this, its architecture. In summary, the Hantas Christian Memorial Kindergarten and 238 President Street are architecturally and culturally significant and are a prominent feature of the Carroll Garden streetscape and a source of neighborhood pride. LPC recommends that the the council uphold both designations and thank you and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you very much Lisa. This is a um, beautiful, um, beautiful building um, as uh, all of our um, proposed landmark buildings are. I guess my only question um, is going to be going back to um, the um, I guess the back and forth on this property uh, with individuals that are not necessarily in support um, of this designation, the initial uh, the initial interaction um, with LPC and um, those who are in opposition um, to this property. Can you give me a little bit of background with that, and uh, not just the kindergarten aspect alone, but the property, the total. Um, uh, inquiry basis um, with regard to the property itself and a little bit more of the opposition? Sure. Um, well, in terms of our, thank you, in terms of our um, public hearing, the public record, we had, you know, largely almost unanimously supportive testimony except for one. Um, prior to that, so we had um, received a request for evaluation earlier this year, um, which actually happened to coincide with some um, neighborhood surveying we were doing in the Carroll Gardens neighborhood. Um, so those things kind of happened together. Um, and we did initial outreach to both property owners in March of um, this year, March 2018. Um, and, uh, you know, Property owner outreach is, can be sometimes challenging um, just because, you know, we depend on public records just like everybody else. So, so getting through to the right people sometimes is more challenging. Um, we were successful in getting through to um, 238 President Street property owners. It took us a little bit longer um, with um, 236. Um, but we did have uh, quite a bit of back and forth, um, or especially quite a bit of output from our office. Um, and um, we, let's see, I think we successfully made um, contact in April um, of, this, of this year. Um, that was after sending um, letters in March. Um, and we, that was right before we calendared um, the buildings. Um, sometimes um, we prefer to have, you know, sort of robust outreach and conversations prior to calendaring, but sometimes that doesn't happen. Um, and then after that, we um, have correspondence back and forth. Um, and um, after the public hearing, we did have a meeting with the property owner's representative. Um, and, we, and we actually did also delay the um, designation vote at the request of the um, owner's representative. Okay, I was only trying to dig a little bit deeper because I am in receipt of the letter uh, from Susan Mauro and uh, just wanted to get a little bit more uh, information from you personally. Did you personally um, have conversation with her? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, at um, She uh, testified at her public hearing and then I was uh, at a meeting with her. Okay. Subsequent to that. All right. That that was my only uh, inquiry on this. I, I'm I'm grateful that you addressed the uh, three the three other points uh, in detail, and those questions have been answered for me. So thank you very much for your testimony, Lisa. Thank you. Uh, we've been joined by Councilmember Miller.
Uh, Councilmember Koo, did you have any questions? No. Councilmember Miller? No. Okay. Okay. Thank you very Thank much, you. Lisa. I do have a letter um, from Councilmember Brad Lander. It's a summary of statement, and I'd like to read that in to the record. He could not be here today. His district covers Carroll Gardens in Brooklyn, where these proposed landmarks are located. He's been an integral part of the community-led effort in support of the designation of these two historic buildings located at 236 and 238 President Street. A petition to designate the two buildings as landmarks has garnered over 1,000 signatures, which will be delivered to the New York City Landmarks Preservation Commission. The other local elected officials who support designation include Congresswoman Nidia Velasquez, State Senator Brian Kavanaugh and Assembly Member Joanne Simon. Councilmember Lander sees the designation of these buildings as New York City landmarks as an opportunity to save, Car to save a Carroll Gardens treasure and, it, and is especially grateful to the owners and residents of 238 President Street whose, whose support for landmarking their own building shows true love of this neighborhood and to the community leaders and advocates who have been leading this effort for years. That is the statement. Uh, from Council Member Brad Lander in support of the designations. Okay, we're going to pause at this time and we're going to go ahead and go for our vote. Uh, we're going to vote on LU 218, the designation by the Landmarks Preservation Commission of 550 Madison Avenue, 37 story postmodern style skyscraper that served as the former AT&T headquarters as a landmark. The subcommittee held a public hearing on this item on November 1st. Council Member Powers supports the designation. I now call for a vote. Council, please call the roll. Adams. I vote aye. Koo. Aye. Miller? Aye. By a vote of three in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and with zero abstentions, the item is uh, recommended for approval. We will hold the vote open. Thank you. The vote will be held open. We're now going to call on the next panel. Uh, before we call on the next panel, were there any other members of the public that wish to testify on the prior item? These are all on the Oh, they're all on the prior? They're on the same. Okay. All right, we're going to call on, oh goodness, handwriting. Is it Jake? James. Yes. <laughs> that is you. <laughs> okay, please, please step up. Yes. Michael Pesci. Okay, please step up. John Hathaway. Please step up, join the panel, and James Protos. Okay, sir, will you please state your name for the record? Yes. Michael Pesci. Okay. Uh, Does it project? There we go. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Please state your name again. Michael Pesci. Thank you. All right, the first gentleman whose name I had a problem with pronouncing. James. Yes. <laughs> Please state your name for the record. James Protos. Now, you were the last gentleman that I called up on the panel. Who was the first gentleman? He was the first. You were the I was the last. 
that was the first. Oh, were you the last? Sir, please state your name for the record. John Hathaway. No. no. All right. Somebody's missing. Bill Minlin. Somebody was testifying in opposition. Somebody who was testifying in opposition, the first name that I called. No? No? No. Okay. You're testifying in opposition. No. We are going to go ahead and start. Uh, Mr. Michael Pesci? Yes. You may begin. I, I have a statement that I've written. It's just a page, so I can just submit the statement. Okay, Mr. Pesci, please read your statement. You can read it. Please read it. Oh, okay. thank you. Um, I've resided in uh, Carroll Gardens since 1955 and at 238 President Street since 1975. I was the uh, assembly member for the 52nd Assembly District, which included Carroll Gardens since uh, before any of you were born, practically. <laughs> Uh, when I became a judge in 1980, I continued to reside, um, and I have seen the landmarking of uh, parts of Carroll Gardens, Cabo Hill, and remaking of many homes into what can be described as some, I'm quoting some uh, fellow uh, residents of Carroll Gardens as quote unquote, alien structures, albeit within applicable ordinances Nevertheless, out of the consistency and actually the fabric of the, the rest of the neighborhood, I've always supported the expansion of landmark areas block by block, cluster by cluster, or individual residences. There are no other structures in the city like 236 and 238 President Street because of their unique history and particular style of construction. The landmarking of 236 President will save what was once a famous church. Um, over some 30 plus years, there have been five conversion of churches in, uh, to residential uh, use in Carroll Gardens, Cobble Hill, and Borham Hill. None of those conversions involved the demolition of any part of those churches. That would happen in this instance unless 236 is uh, uh, landmark. I repeat, it didn't happen in any of the other churches. Uh, and those churches, as residential, stand out quite well um, and are part of the history of Carroll Gardens. 236 would be another. Um, it would be a travesty if it would not landmarked and preserved uh, for history. I urge you to approve the designation of 236 and 238 President Street as historical landmarks. Thank you very much for being here today. I truly appreciate your testimony. Thank you. Okay, sir. Uh, good day. Thanks for granting me the floor. My name is Jim Protos. Um, in 1996, my wife Grace and I purchased the second floor apartment at 238 President Street in Carroll Gardens and we have lived and raised our two teenage daughters there. Uh, the two beautiful buildings at 236 and 238 President Street represent a shared history and a diverse mix of social, religious, and ethnic ties. The Norwegian, Mexican, and Italian immigrations, the Deaconess Movement, a precursor of women's suffrage, the free kindergarten movement, various strands of the Methodist Episcopal faith, and the grand architectural expression of the mid and late 19th century when they were built. Current day representatives of these threads, as well as some 2,000 friends, neighbors, and supporters signed our petitions earlier this year and voiced their desire to preserve these structures by landmarking them. I came here today to represent them 
and I want to express my appreciation for the Landmarks Preservation Commission's support and thank you City Council members for hearing our case and for considering our landmarking request. You perform a great service for the city. I would also like to thank my neighbors and friends and especially, especially Councilman Lander and his staff, the Historic Districts Council, our local community board six and Carroll Gardens Neighborhood Association, Assemblymember Simon, Senator Kavanaugh, and Congresswoman Velasquez for supporting our effort to safeguard these structures as a vital link to the history of the neighborhood and New York City. I hope you will help us fulfill our aim to secure landmark status for these buildings. Thank you and have a good afternoon. Thank you very much, Mr. Protos. I, I echo you in um, loving the idea of maintaining the history of our communities across New York City. Thank you so much for your testimony today. Sir? Good afternoon. My name is John Hathaway. Um, I'm a 30-year resident of Carroll Gardens, which may not mean too much, relatively speaking, but anyway. Um, <laughs> um, I, uh, I'm also a, uh, a director of the Carroll, Good Carroll Gardens Neighborhood Association, and I'm an architect. Um, first, I want to echo Jim's thanks to Brad Lander and particularly uh, Simeon Bankoff of Historic Districts Council who helped guide and uh, support us in this effort uh, to have these buildings landmarked. Um, anyway, I, uh, as an architect, I've been particularly uh, fortunate to work on a couple of projects with the uh, residents of 238 President Street, and I've witnessed their dedication to preserving the building. Um, in fact, one of the residents purchased the building in 1974 and saved it from a developer who was going to gut the whole place. Um, and now the, the interior of the building is well restored, uh, including its grand staircases, uh, in, in addition to the preservation of the exterior. Um, and that's what's beautiful about this building. It really remains so intact. In fact, I didn't even realize until I did some research for uh, this whole designation that um, the only change as LPC had noted, is that the attic was expanded into uh, a fourth, a full fourth floor, but it was done so sensitively that it, um, it's just a, a beautiful example of how a building can be treated and maintain its integrity. Um, anyway, uh, the uh, the 236 President Street Hans Memorial, uh, or Hans Christian Memorial Kindergarten, um, you know, it was actually constructed in the side yard of 238. Um, the owner, um, Elmira Christian, you know, just lopped off a, you know, portion of her lot to build this thing. Um, and uh, so they're intricately tied together, their histories and uh, um, the land they sit on. And it, it's a particularly, as again, I'm repeating a little bit of what Landmark said, but uh, it's an unusual example of Beaux-Arts architecture in Carroll Gardens. Um, and uh, particularly significant in that it is a freestanding um, structure, allowing the front cornice to wrap around both sides of the building. Um, and despite the unsympathetic garage addition, uh, which appears to be easily reversible, the facade is otherwise intact. Um, as a member of Carroll Gardens Neighborhood Association, I just have to say we've been working on trying to get the very small two-block historic districts expanded over the uh, past more than a decade. And while I don't consider these two buildings as a success in our grand <laughs> uh, picture, it, having these two buildings preserved is so important because they're in fact one of the most important, uh, two of the most important buildings in the whole uh, neighborhood. Um, and we'll certainly continue our efforts to get the uh, Carroll Gardens uh, district expanded um, so that its uh, community uh, is well preserved. And it would be great uh, again, in designating these two buildings, if it can join the other individual landmarks that are right within a two-block radius, including um, St. Paul's Episcopal Church and the John Rankin Home, which is now the Guido Funeral Home. Um, so there's a rich architectural history clustered in this area. Um, and uh, I think I'm not alone, just on a sort of a very personal thing, of, of finding myself both deliberately and sometimes subconsciously walking down this block because it is such a pleasant block to go down because of these two buildings. The way they're set back, it creates a beautiful space. You can appreciate the entire facade. And um, 
it's just something that uh, you don't find too often in the city, and I hope you guys appreciate that too. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hathaway. I appreciate your testimony very much uh, for digging even deeper into the history uh, of Carroll Gardens for us. That is one of the most rewarding pieces of, um, of the job that I do when I take this seat uh, every month. So thank you very much for that. I know Lisa was taking notes about future aspirations as well. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, panel, for your testimony. Thank you. We've been joined by Council Member Barron. And our vote is still open on LU-218. Council? On the vote to approve LU-218, the AT&T headquarters is a landmark. Uh, Council Member Barron? I vote aye. By a vote of four in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and with zero abstentions, the item is recommended for approval by the Foley Land Use Committee. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member Barron. We have another panel. Thank you. Philip Mindlin, <coughs> Simeon Bankoff, and Glenn Kelly, please step up. Okay, please state your name for the record. Sure, my name is Glenn Kelly. Do you want to do this straight up or one at a time? We can do it together. It's, it's fine. Simeon Bankoff, Executive Director of Stark Districts Council. Philip Mindlin. Thank you very much. You may begin. Sure. Um, I, uh, my name is Glenn Kelly. I'm a 40-year resident of Carroll Gardens and have served uh, with John Hathaway as co-chair of the Land Use Committee of the Carroll Gardens Neighborhood Association. I am currently a member of Community Board 6. And I want to just emphasize that Community Board 6 is in support of this uh, application. Um, I am also hopeful that we will one day uh, see an expansion of the Carroll Gardens Landmark District. And until that day comes, um, we are presented with an opportunity to protect two of only a handful of buildings in Carroll Gardens that are truly unique. I uh, believe strongly that they add to the architectural and historic character of the neighborhood, and I encourage you strongly to support them. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Council, uh, council members. Simeon Bankoff, Historic Districts Council. I really don't have a lot to add to all the great testimony that's happened before. We're strongly in support of this designation. I'd like to thank uh, especially Council Member Lander, um, Assembly Member Simon, Kavanaugh, and uh, also Nidia Velasquez for all their support. It's, uh, but really, this is a story of the residents and the community coming together to protect these wonderful, beautiful, unique buildings. Um, it's uh, the the speed and also I'd be remiss without saying to thank you to the Landmarks Commission for really responding swiftly and decisively uh, in, a, in a real great fast turnaround and doing a wonderful presentation that talks extensively about the cultural and architectural history of these buildings. They're desperately meritorious of Landmark designation and we're very pleased uh, that we've gotten this far. We urge you to support them. Uh, the only thing I can add is um, Interestingly, if you, if you haven't seen the buildings, you might not know it uh, if you haven't visited them in person. The, what looks to be very, the very small building is actually, I believe, 3,000 square feet of space. Um, it's, it's strange because it's next to two big, bigger buildings, so it looks really diminutive. But it's about three times the size of my own row house, so uh, it's actually quite, quite large. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Chair Adams and uh, committee members. My name is Philip Mindlin. I, too, uh, have lived in Brooklyn for many years. I've lived at 238 President Street for um, more than 30 years. And I, too, am grateful to everyone who's helped advance the process of landmarking these buildings, and in particular to the Landmarks Preservation Commission, which has been truly outstanding. I want to make a couple of, uh, mention a couple of items that haven't been brought out because there'd be no point to repeating all of the correct and interesting points that have already been made. Um, one is that this neighborhood was rezoned in 2008, and 236 President and 238 President, almost uniquely, were upzoned to R6A, which creates the potential for uh, building a much taller structure than what's around them. 
And that makes these two buildings particularly attractive to developers and particularly at risk for destruction. Um, secondly, I'd like to uh, echo what Glenn said, or Simeon, or both, that while Carroll Gardens is a wonderful, charming neighborhood, it, it doesn't have many buildings that are as individually outstanding as these buildings. Um, it, it's charming in part for its, for its uniformity, for its coherent integrity, but these two buildings stand out as unique. And they're, they're interesting as well because they, they show a trend or a, a movement in the neighborhood. They were built by a man who moved there because, because it was a luxurious suburb. And he built this rather lavish house because this was a suburb for people who lived in New York City. With time, Norwegian uh, immigrants, sailors, like uh, Elmira Christian's husband, Hans Christian, uh, moved into the neighborhood and became prominent. Hans Christian was active in the church. Elmira Christian bought the house and built the little kindergarten as a memorial to him. With time, the neighborhood became a Latino neighborhood, and it was the first Spanish-speaking congregation in New York. And Joan Baez's grandfather lived in 238 and um, preached in 236. Uh, Joan Baez uh, was one of the people who submitted a letter in support, not a song, but a letter <laughs> in, um, I, I, in support of the building. I was a little depressed to hear her referred to as Joanne Baez because it reminded me of how old I am. <laughs> Nobody my age would have, would, have, um, would have thought of calling her anything but, um, but Joan. Um, and then it also illustrates an effort that continues to the day to sort of integrate people who are recent arrivals to our shores into the society that's here. That's what the Deaconess Movement was all about, and that's what 236 and 238 president were there to do. It was to help people become Americans, which is noteworthy today. And actually, the trajectory of the Baez family illustrates that. They arrived here penniless from Mexico. Um, Alberto Baez, the grandfather, became the preacher and lived in this house. His son became a very, very prominent physicist. That's Joan Baez's father, who holds many patents. And then you know, the granddaughter, Joan Baez, and her sister, Mimi Farina, um, became important cultural uh, figures in the United States. Um, I'd last say that I think, as everyone else has commented, the community really did rise up to support these buildings. I mean, I'm here, but I have an individual interest. I, I live in one of these buildings. I adore them. I adore them both. But it's not just me. There were, in fact, 2,000 people who signed petitions and 1,000 people who wrote letters and sent emails. So it isn't just us. It's everyone who walks by and everyone who calls out to us and cars that stop and talk to us about the buildings. And um, as noted, there were 21 people who spoke at the hearing and only one person in opposition. So with that, I, I thank you for your attention. And again, I, I thank Councilman Lander, and I thank Simeon and the Landmarks Preservation Commission. Thank you, Mr. Midland. It's always nice to see the owner put the icing on the cake uh, at these hearings. So <laughs> I thank you very much. Uh, Council members, did you have any questions for the panel at all? OK. Thank you very much, panel. Thank you. Are there any more members of the public who wish to testify on these items? Seeing none, the public hearings on LU 238 and 239 are now closed and the items will be laid over. Our next public hearing is on LU 256, an application submitted by the Department of Transportation and the Department of Citywide Administrative Services pursuant to Section 197-C of the New York City Charter for the site selection and acquisition of par property located at 25 14th Street in Brooklyn for a DOT fleet vehicle maintenance and repair facility. This site is also in Council Member Lander's district. I now open the public hearing. Okay, we'll call on, I believe it's, is it Keys Stall? Jessica, yes, good. <laughs> we'll get you to state your name for the record, Jessica. Dale Lazerson? And Michael Molien? Molien. Okay, very good. Okay. 
Council, please swear in the panel. Please state your names. Jessica Make sure the microphone is turned on. Jessica Werwarg. Okay, Stahl. I'm Dale Lazarson with DCAS. I'm Michael Molero, Fleet Services. Please raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the subcommittee and in response to all council member questions? Yes. I do. Yes. yes. You may begin. Um, good afternoon, council members. My name is Jessica Werwarg. I am the Director of Strategic Planning and Sustainability in Facilities Management at New York City Department of Transportation. I am joined by my DOT and DCAS colleagues to present the ULERP application um, number 180418 PCK for 25 14th Street in Brooklyn. This is DOT's Fleet Services Repair and Maintenance Facility for your consideration and approval. Thank you for this opportunity. Council members, you've received a PDF with some images of the site and a site plan for your review. It's also up on the screen. Uh, I will present an overview of the facility and some of our ideas for exploring sustainability improvements to the site. So to, oops, okay, refer to slide two for this part. Uh, DOT has a great need for a vehicle repair and maintenance facility since operations at the Brooklyn Army, Army Terminal were discontinued in 2012 when the lease was terminated by the landowner to pursue other uses for the site. In July 2015, DOT engaged DCAS to find a new location that would support a new Brooklyn Fleet Services operation. This site was identified as an ideal location to service and repair DOT vehicles that are part of operations throughout all five boroughs. The Hamilton Asphalt Plant is across the street from this facility, that's DOT Asphalt Plant, and the Gowanus Expressway is easily accessible, which will improve efficiency through reduced travel times and allow easy access from truck routes to the site. There are also approximately four other fleet repair facilities throughout the city. This new facility will reduce the excessive demands placed on DOT's other facilities. Since the site will be able to accommodate a range of vehicle types, service times will also decrease, which will support DOT's citywide lane resurfacing targets and other fleet services related cost reduction efforts. The site is located near the F, G, and R trains and three bus lines, giving employees public transportation options to get to work. So just I think the next few slides I'll just go through. The next three slides are photos of the exterior of the building. Slides three and four are from the view of 14th Street, and slide five was taken mid-block from Hamilton Place, looking toward Hamilton Avenue and 14th Street and the Gowanus. And slide six is our final slide. This shows the interior layout of the facility. And just a little bit about the sustainability and resiliency. Sustainability and stormwater management is a priority of the agency and the city, as well as a priority of the council as we discussed already with Council Member Lander. Toward this, and whether as a part of the proposed lease or as a subsequent project, DOT is exploring opportunities to incorporate solar panels onto the building's roof. In terms of resiliency and stormwater management, we are planning on incorporating, incorporating interior trenching drains that will catch debris as vehicles and trucks enter the facility to help address stormwater runoff. We are also exploring the possibilities of adding other improvements, such as rainwater, catch, a rainwater catchment system, rain gardens, or bioswales. There is a parking area to be used as a, you can see sort of on the bottom left, to be used as a staging yard for vehicles awaiting maintenance and repaired vehicles, which will accommodate about 60 vehicles. The facility will have 15 workstations for up to 15 large vehicles and nine workstations for medium to small vehicles. Given the number of spaces available in the staging yard and the number of workstations inside the facility, this site sufficiently accommodates DOT trucks and vehicles on site. There is a blacksmith shop area used to craft replacement parts in the rear of the facility and work desk stations towards the front of the facility as well. The site will have approximately 100 employees working in several shifts. Um, thank you for your time and consideration, and we'd be happy to address any questions you have. Okay, I'm just going to um, note that the committee didn't receive any written testimony. Would have been nice to follow along with your narrative. Um, would make questions a little bit easier, I think, for uh, the committee. So, okay. just in, in fu for future reference. Okay. 
Um, okay, I have no questions at this time. Councilmember Coe, questions? Okay. Okay. No one else? Just me. Questions are needed. I didn't have uh, any. The, the uh, presentation was pretty straightforward, and um, I think the photos say it all. Uh, council members in support um, of this item. I have no questions at this time. Thank you, panel. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Are there any more members of the public who wish to testify on this item? Seeing none. The public hearing on LU 239 is now closed and the item is laid over. This concludes today's business. I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, council, and land use staff for attending today's hearing. This meeting is hereby adjourned. <laughs>